Okay, so this is an Arcana video. I just wanted to kind of do a video with voiceover to update people on the progress I've been making. For those of you who are maybe new to the Arcana videos, Arcana is a ceremonial magic simulator about performing occult rituals in order to explore the planes of the multiverse. So here we go. Let's do a quick ritual. Let's light a candle just to get it started. We're going to charge the atmosphere of this room with various symbolic objects. We're going to start with some absinthe, put a little bit of absinthe down over here. And, and a few things happen. One is that we see some curtains fade in and out because this is kind of like a scene change. The nature of the universe is theater in Arcana. The other thing that happened is we sort of saw these flashes of objects. And then as we, we neared the plane of pleasure, we, we entered this realm that is sort of like the sanctum where we were before, but it is this kind of voodoo influenced garden. And it's got this kind of glowing pastel light purples and pinks. And it, and it also has the sound of, of children's laughter because this is kind of the plane of pleasure. So we're going to hang out for here for a while and then if we want to return to home base, to our own sanctum, we can just kind of uh, ring this bell. And now the curtains appear and, and disappear, the smoke dissipates, and we are back in our sanctum. Now, while we're back in our sanctum, we have various tools that are available to us on the altar. For example, we have a scrying mirror. And we can open this mirror up and we can see kind of glimpses of other realms. So this will eventually be sort of like a, uh, a radar system, a, a way of orienting oneself in the multiverse. But for now, let's uh, close the mirror down. Let's do another ritual to visit another plane of existence. Let's try placing a skull down. So skulls are associated with death. We're going to charge the atmosphere with death. We put the skull down. We see a scythe and a skull fade in, and now we're in this really spooky graveyard with this kind of flickering coffin. And I should say that almost all of the art in this uh, in this game is by Thomas Van Huffel. Uh, a little bit of it is by some uh, some earlier students. Uh, Greg Rowling uh, is one of them. But anyway, we're on this other plane of existence, and uh, we can kind of hear howling winds, and we can see uh, grayish smoke, and this is kind of a scary place to be. So let's again ring the bell to return to our home plane of existence. So now we're back in our home plane of existence, and the cool thing is that any, any combination of these objects can sort of charge the atmosphere of the room differently and propel us out uh, along various vectors in the metaverse. And on the back end of all this, there are calculations, mathematical calculations that have to do with in-dimensional space and calculating the distance between these objects and these planes of existence. But as a player, uh, you don't really have to worry about any of that. What you're sort of doing is experimenting with combinations of objects, various ritual actions, and finding new locations and new objects with which you can perform new rituals. And there are various clues that are sort of tipping you off as to what's going on. On in, in your travels. So for example, if you watch the, the flame of the candle, and, and as we, we could put down, for example, a, uh, a life uh, object, a uh, flower, and if you watch the flame of the candle, you can see that it, it widens a little bit as we move out toward the life plane. And actually, it's widening quite a bit there. And, and in fact, uh, we, we moved with such velocity that our silver cord actually broke. And that could be very dangerous in the future. You kind of heard that snapping sound. But we can regenerate that cord, that silver cord, by just ringing our bell if things ever get too dangerous for us. So. And the colors of the smoke also sort of signify the directions in which we are moving. Now, we have another ritual tool, which is the book. And if we open up the book, there are various chants inside of the book, uh, ranging from Tibetan to Enochian, uh, so Tibetan, Enochian, the Lesser Banishing Ritual of the Pentagram, the Bornless One Ritual, and uh, because I'm a big Twin Peaks fan, uh, we, we of course have this one. I raise me. And and in fact, it is possible to find the red room somewhere out in the multiverse. But I'll leave that to people to sort of find as they explore with the game. Now, in addition to visiting 
all of the planes of the multiverse. And, and there are many, many planes uh, that we could visit, but I just wanted to show those two to start off. Uh, we have a, sort of another functionality, which is summoning. And in order to summon, uh, what, we're, what we're doing is we're sort of placing a bait to draw spirits toward us. We're, we're not so much projecting into the multiverse as we are drawing spirits out of the multiverse toward our home plane and our sanctum. So to do that, we're going to place objects in the center circle rather than on the loci off at the side. And let's see, it would be fun to maybe try to summon a, a spirit of good. Let's let's lighten up the mood a little bit. So we've got this amulet of Ra that's associated with good. We're going to place it down in the middle. And that bell sound that you hear is uh, signifying that we're now in summoning mode. And so let's take uh, another amulet and let's see if we can kind of reel in the spirit that we've that we've hopefully attracted with the amulet. So we'll kind of put one down and we're just kind of reeling in the spirit and you can start to see it it flicker into existence there so so we have summoned a seraphim toward us this multi-winged angel with eyes all over the wings again very very beautiful art by thomas van huffel but maybe we might find the spirit oppressive after a while it could sort of be judging us self-righteously so let's uh let's banish the spirit and, and to banish uh, we're going to, to use a sigil out of the sigil book. Let's do an upside down pentagram. That's very evil. That'll that'll drive away the spirit. Ah, there we go. So you can see uh, the bell stops, the spirit disappears, the smoke fades. We always need to clean up after we have performed a ritual. So let's ring this bell. Everything disappears. We're kind of back to normal. Let's see. Let's try. Um, let us try a knowledge spirit that might be fun so let's see knowledge in our correspondences we've got uh, various things and we've kind of been experimenting with uh, assigning different roles to them uh, but let's see a crystal ball that probably makes sense its description gives us a hint the spheres opalescent depths promise knowledge and madness alike so let's see let's put a, a crystal ball down in the middle Again, we start to hear our ringing sound, and hopefully we've sort of hooked a knowledge spirit. This is kind of like astral, astral bass fishing is sort of the idea. So let's put down a few crystal balls just to see if we can draw things in. Ah, and, and we've actually hooked some other things. We've hooked another crystal ball that's just kind of hanging out there in the metaverse, but we don't really need it. We already have a crystal ball. Let's do this. And maybe one more crystal ball over here. And maybe one more. There we go. And so she was hard to reel in, but that's uh, Pistis Sophia, the Gnostic god uh, goddess of wisdom. And so we sort of pulled her in. She's got eyes all over her and this kind of strange halo. Again, really cool art. And, but. After we will have consulted with her, we, we don't need to take up too much more of her time. We should we should let her go back. So let's see. Let's do another sigil. Let's do let's do a hexagram to put things back into balance with the planets. She disappears. We can ring the bell, and we're back to normal. Now we've got a, a lot of other sort of ritual tools, and one of them uh, is a cup. And the cup drink of the elixirs. And see through new eyes. So the visual effect. What we're doing here is we're, we're drinking various substances out of this cup. And so let's drink. And we drink some blood. An iron tang wafts through the air, and, and all of a sudden everything is kind of suffused. It's uh, ultra bright and warm. And then we could maybe switch to absinthe. Oh man, we drink the absinthe, then everything starts to warp like it's like a carnival mirror or something. And uh, the sharp scent of anise and wormwood uh, pierces the air. Oh wow, we, we, we drink a little bit of water and that actually sort of sharpens our perception and suddenly the, the visuals back there are very bright and precise. And then finally we empty out the cup and, and our vision is sort of back to normal. Um, another thing that we have at our disposal, the, the book houses various chants 
And so we can use these chants as, as sort of modifiers that will move us through the uh, metaverse at, at different rates. And, and so, for example, we could do a Tibetan chant. And we will find that depending on the chant, uh, while the chant is active, it, it can propel us at, at, at various rates through through the multiverse. It could speed us up or slow us down. Let's just turn it on, and then let's see. Let's let's use this uh, where the pyramid meets the eye. Reality begins. So let's let's try sort of uh, moving toward uh, reality. Yeah, and so a pyramid kind of starts to fade into existence. We get this beautiful music from Bach. This kind of harpsichord music. And, and now everything is night. It is this kind of a, uh, clarified, ultra-romantic vision of our reality. And another thing to kind of notice is that the whole time, we saw the big moon up there, but the sun and the moon are sort of always there, and ritual time is being kept track of, uh, not only sort of calendrical time, uh, day, month, year, uh, the, the hour, but also the phase of the moon. And these various um, sort of time factors play into the effects of our rituals. They might make them easier to do. They might slow them down. They might make them more powerful, less powerful, depending on sort of the phase of the moon, the time, and the nature of the ritual. Now, a new thing that I've added is sort of a, a, a gestural element that corresponds to various gestures that are made in the process of a ritual. So let's see, let's uh, try summoning another thing. Let's summon, um, not 100% not sure whether this will work, but let's try summoning a pain spirit. So this is the serpent's crown. And the serpent's crown is associated with pain, and it looks like that it has attracted a, a bloody cup. But I don't think we're going to be able to pull in a pain spirit. That's okay, Let's let's just try and see if we can reel anything in. Yeah, we actually we actually reeled in another crown, but again, we don't we don't need it. We already have a crown. And doesn't look like we're going to get the pain spirit. We might Well, there's the cup. Which we can totally pick up if we wanted it. Ah, there's the pain spirit. Yeah, there he is. Oh, he's kind of scary. Yeah, he's... The closer that he sort of fades in, the darker he gets, you can see he's this, you know, terrible, suspended, pierced in different ways. He kind of looks like Pyramid Head or a Cenobite or, or, or Crazy Horse in some kind of sun dance ritual. Anyway, he's scary enough that we probably want to get rid of him. So let us draw our sword, used in the process of banishing. Okay. Now, let's see if we can make a pentagram. Uh, the lights that are fading back there, though, that's the, uh, the, the queen scale of color from the Golden Dawn correspondences of the Tree of Life, just, just in case you're interested. But let, let's see if we can trace a pentagram. Again, it's a little finicky, so very carefully, very carefully trace that pentagram, and it may or may not recognize it. Let's, let's release the power of that sigil through the hourglass. Oh man, it thought it was Daleth. It thought it was the Hebrew letter Daleth. Yeah, I put in the entire Hebrew alphabet as gestural correspondences, but the algorithm doesn't always pick up. We can try one more time. If, if we need to cheat with the book, we totally can. But let's let's try again, very carefully, see if we can get a pentagram. Oh man, okay, so it thought it was Beth. Uh, I thought it was the, the Hebrew letter Beth. Okay, so this is actually why I went ahead and did the drop down. Uh, because drawing gestures with a mouse is hard, and they won't always be recognized. So if we really need an upright pentagram, all we have to do is go to the book, and, and we can do one. But it's cool also to have uh, gestures as an option, and as you can see, uh, the system is actually pretty good at recognizing Hebrew letters. Uh, so that should eventually allow you know a whole other 22 set of uh, possibilities in terms of, of what those gestures can do. So let's see, let's sheath our sword. Yep, sheath our sword. Uh, we should clean up from that ritual. And maybe we could do kind of one more to finish things off. I love the plane of knowledge. Absolutely love the plane of knowledge. So 
maybe let's uh, visit there real quick. And so we'll, we'll put down, we've still got kind of a particle trail. The uh, energy of our previous ritual is kind of sending us. Yeah, and just a little bit of a glimpse of it for the moment. All right, and so uh, just a brief glimpse of the plane of knowledge there, and we'll go ahead and clean up from that. And we've got so much magical energy in this sanctum uh, bursting all over the place. Uh, it's probably time to stop for now, but I just wanted to kind of give people sort of an update of where things are going. And I may make some other longer videos that, that explore uh, a little bit more of the back end, but I wanted people to kind of see uh, a lot of the features together uh, from astral projection, to summoning, to chanting, to lighting candles, to placing objects, to the mirror for scrying, the new gestural system with the sword, drinking various elixirs from the cup, and these are just some of the rituals that can be performed. You can combine those objects and those actions in all sorts of different ways uh, to produce effects that are emergent, that are not so much built in as they are uh, emergent based on the player's action. So anyway, uh, thanks for watching and I hope to talk to you next time.